Hey everybody, welcome into this week's episode of Tony's Spot on Fishing. I'm your host, Tony Friesack. Little breezy day out here on the river, but we're back where we ended last season. I'll show you how good of a fishery the Des Plaines River really can be. That's all this week on Tony's Spot on Fishing. Oh, that's a nice one. Oh, yes. One of my favorite ways to catch them is a spinner bait in the early summer patterns. Just got started right here, just outside of Big Basin, man. It's a great way to start it. It's gonna be a good day on the Des Plaines River. So we literally came out of Big Basin Marina here. This is where I prefer to launch on the south end of the river. And put the trolling motor down and right away popped that first fish on a spinnerbait. And in the early summer like this, it's still one of my favorite presentations to find active fish. Right outside of Big Basin here, we have a little bit of rock, a little bit of vegetation up on this flat. There's always current coming by it, so it's always pushing a new wave of food, a shad, right up on it. So I love coming right out and just immediately starting right here. And early in the summer like this, we can throw a spinnerbait, 3 8 ounce spinnerbait with a trailer hook, because they are notorious for short striking out here. But essentially, we can just cover water through this whole section, go right past the cut, and check out the weed flat that's just on the other side of that cut and pick off these active fish. One other little trick I've done, and I do it more so out here just because the shad are a little bit smaller, that blade has been downsized, that front blade to a four and a half. Now th this bait from striking the KVD series comes with a five. I just go down to that four and a half just a little bit smaller Keeping it just a, tear, uh, a hair downsized really helps get more strikes out here. Man, let me tell you, the weatherman got it wrong again today. Five to 10 mile an hour winds, he was just a hair off. That wind is howling today. I'd probably say we're about 15 to 20 with some gusts close to 30. So essentially it kind of threw off my game plan a little bit, but there's still areas we can get into where we're gonna get out of the wind on the river. The biggest thing you want to look at is where you can find vegetation, rock humps, rock bars, submerged points, any kind of structure that's going to hold bait fish, you're going to have your predator fish, your bass, largemouth and smallmouth on those structures. So we've actually just continued further downriver from Big Basin and we get around these rock shorelines here and they have some vegetation to them. And again, still a bit of a breeze, but we're not as bad as we were. We can actually control the boat a little better. We can cast more than six feet trying to throw into it. But this is all primo water down here with the vegetation and the structure that's on these shorelines. And again, this time of year, we can just run and gun throwing spinner baits or even square bills if we're out of the cover, out of the vegetation. Now, if we didn't have the wind, we could also wacky worm some of this uh, vegetation, the edges and stuff like that. It's just pretty rough to do when you have the gusty winds like this. So the game plan when you have conditions, if you can get out of the wind and you can fish finesse, go ahead and do it. But otherwise, we are just gonna stay in that run and gun mentality and pick off active fish as we go. There he is. I knew there had to be one off that brush pile right there. He's not a giant, but he's a fish. That was almost too perfect a structure. Little guy there. Well, that's another thing to focus on when you see these, you know, brush piles down trees, 
bass relate to all that kind of cover too. And kind of when you find areas like this where you have vegetation and the brush, now you kind of combine structures. It goes back to that old spot on the spot where two structures come together. It's always a safe bet to have at least one or two fish on it. it just looked too perfect. There had to be one there. Boy, that bite's getting a little lighter. Another one that just kind of sucked it in. Again, not a real huge fish. But with the wind howling, we're able to still catch a couple. They're calling for a front to move through or a possibility of a front. The weatherman keeps putting it in, taking it out, putting it in, taking it out. So we don't really know if this storm is ever gonna materialize. The way these fish are kind of acting, that first one this morning just crushed it. And now these last two, a little bit smaller fish, true, but just sucking it in, not really aggressive on the bait at all. But you gotta roll with what Mother Nature gives you. And she's given us lemons and we're doing our best to make lemonade as my area I was blocked from the wind is all of a sudden no longer blocked. <laughs> it's always nice when the wind shifts on you and starts howling. Makes for a fun day on the water. But that's okay. Still beats doing anything else, right? There it is. Come here. A little better in size. Boy, and that is the importance of that trailer hook on a spinner bait. There we go, another little guy. This area we've moved to now, kind of using the wind to my advantage. We got a nice isolated rock bar with sporadic and isolated vegetation around it. Wind's blowing across it. It's kind of one of those areas that you'll come across and you know it may only be good for a fish or two, but it's well worth stopping and, and hitting. And like I say, utilizing the, the wind to our advantage is kind of pushing us through. I'm running and gunning anyway with the spinner bait. And we can throw right up towards that rock and the vegetation, pick a fish or two off, and then we're off and running on to the next one. Just kind of how we can run and gun and utilize wind to our advantage out here on this river system. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, we want to show you a special clip of a interview we did with Sergeant Tommy's kids and give you just a little quick peek at some of the great work they're doing and this foundation and why you guys need to get behind it. Hey everybody, right now we are here at Herrick Lake, part of the DuPage County Forest Preserve, to tell you about a great event that's gonna be happening here on June 16th. It's part of Family Fishing Days here presented by Sergeant Tommy's Kids. With me right here today are two members of the board. I have Kalen, thank you so much for being here. Brad, thank you so much for joining us. Kalen Fessmeyer, who is Sergeant Tommy's cousin and also happens to be the event chair for this great event, the family fishing event here at Herrick Lake, um, can tell us now a little bit about Tommy and what it was like being around him growing up with him. I'm very lucky to have had him as a cousin that I grew up around and he did teach me to fish when I was five years old along with my dad and my grandpa and he did teach me to wakeboard when I got to be a teenager and he was always so generous with his time. I know that he would want to see other little children learning to fish and just spending time outside today. Tommy was in the Marines and he loved being in the Marine Corps and unfortunately we did lose Tommy in 2006 in Iraq. As soon as Tommy passed we knew that we wanted to do something with his legacy. It was really important to us that his loss not be in vain. He made such a big impact on all of us, and we wanted to make sure that that impact kept going with other children and other families. So pretty much immediately, our family started Sergeant Tommy's Kids. It's the Sergeant Thomas M. Gilbert Memorial Foundation, and we knew that we wanted to make an impact on children because Tommy loved children so much. And we wanted it to be about the outdoors because he was so passionate about the outdoors. He loved to fish. We have a mission to introduce children to the outdoors. And we say that we want to 
increase uh, childhood appreciation and education for the outdoors. And so far, we are 12 years strong in doing just that. We're very happy to be here for the 12th annual Sergeant Tommy's Kids Family Fishing Day. And what exactly, on, on June 16th, what is everything we have going on here that day? Yeah. Registration starts at 8 a.m. and the event kicks off at 9 a.m. with some introductions and um, the Star Spangled Banner from a very talented young singer. Then we let kids free and we, we have an event where we um, allow kids to take a rotation of different things around the lake. They'll take turns learning to cast in a field off of Herrick and then they will spend some time around the lake learning to fish and really getting their hands dirty. And um, the other event that we have going on at the same time is crafts. So children will learn to cast and they will spend time at the lake and then they can also head on over to the pavilion where they will be doing different types of craft activities with some of our volunteers. Throughout the whole day we have lunch for children, we have different snacks that we offer and they will get to keep everything they get here today including their fishing pole and their tackle box. Brad Palhink right now with us. He is of course the chairman of the board for Sergeant Tommy's Kids, also was Tommy's brother-in-law. Uh, you, you know, Tony, he was such, just a big spirit. Uh, he had such an impact on everybody he met. Um, that's why Sergeant Tommy's kids is never struggling for volunteers and people to help uh, because he touched so many people's lives. Um, my best memory, memories of him are his smile, his smirk, uh, his confidence. Um, he was just such a gifted outdoorsman. Um, his father exposed him to it and the student quickly became the master and uh, was teaching him stuff. I remember being out fishing with Tommy up at uh, his parents cottage in Michigan and we we're going out fishing and he, he dipped his finger in the water and he said I, I think I'll try uh, chartreuse today. <laughs> what is the whole foundation, the goals? Absolutely, so uh, we exist to promote youth appreciation and education of the outdoors. Uh, and you can best serve our foundation uh, by coming out and, and supporting the day. Uh, you can make donations always online at sergeanttommyskids.org. We'll be here Saturday, June 16th, 9 a.m. right here, Herrick Lake, part of the DuPage County Forest Preserves. If you haven't gone to Sergeant Tommy's Kids website, please do so, check it out. You can still register to be on the waiting list. This event is full, but there may be a few kids that can't make it. Yep. Last minute, you can still get in. To see that full interview, ladies and gentlemen, we invite you to check out the link below to hear more about Sergeant Thomas Gilbert and all the great work the Foundation's doing and ways you can get involved and help this great organization. Again, the link to their full interview is in the description of this video. Again, just picking and choosing spots out of the wind. What we have coming up here, it's a, it's a small area and it's actually what I've just for no better term for it, called a green marker point my whole life. Essentially, it's just that. That's what the channel marker is on that point. Ooh, we got a little bit of a cool breeze all of a sudden now. That northeast wind is starting. But what's nice about this point is the wind is kind of blowing into it. It's going to actually push the bait fish up to it. There's a little bit of vegetation, some rock, and of course the sunken point itself. One other thing to always watch out for here, you gotta remember there's always gonna be barges up and down this river. Just always make sure you give them enough room to maneuver in the channels. Because they are a lot bigger and they cannot maneuver as easily as we can. But just something to watch out for when you're down in this section here, there's gonna be a lot of barge traffic. But these are the areas we're looking for constantly. We're looking for areas that current is going to be, there is some current to the river down here, don't get me wrong. It's not as fast as like the Fox River or the DuPage or the shallower parts of the Des Plaines. It's a lot deeper water, but there is current. So you're still looking at current breaks and that's what the points will give. And anytime you can add structure onto those, with rock and vegetation. And in this case, the wind is now pushing into it. These are the areas you're gonna to wanna to look for on the river. Oh, camera guy. I can't believe I got him to eat a sink going in this wind. This wind is something, man. You bringing him up the current is fun too. 
Tony just freaked out the way that I both flipped that fish. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, man. You got some pliers handy? Yeah. Not huge, but it's fun. I can't believe he ate the Cinco in this way. Right here. We're not going to boat flip them like last time. We'll go down again. I can feel it bouncing on the rocks and then all of a sudden, boom! <laughs> I mean, this wind is just dragging the Cinco behind the boat. This wind is absolutely just gale force winds all of a sudden northeast and it is a cool breeze this water is not cold by any means folks but it is just a there we go oh and i'll tell you our camera guy boy he wanted that jig huh that might be the nicest one yet yep <laughs> our camera guy Wanted to get in on a little bit of action, and he was flipping a Senko, and the current was just bouncing it. And I said, you know what? You caught a couple fish. I'm going to put on a finesse jig off of this point, and sure enough. But front coming through, it's getting cold, and I'll tell you what. They're not chasing that spinnerbait anymore. We're just putting in a little bit more time and effort here. Small, compact on that finesse jig, bouncing a Senko. Camera guy is doing a little trick on his Senko though. He's actually got a little bullet weight up in front of there, about a 32nd ounce weight just to keep its head down and kind of bouncing it around the rocks. And I've been just pitching this jig, 3 16 ounce, short, compact. That one ate it pretty good. But the, the spinnerbait bite died with this wind shift, the cold breeze. Just stay on them, grind it out. You'll still catch fish out here. Same exact thing. That fish was just hooked right deeper in the part of the mouth. He was not down his throat, so we're able to get him out. But still, we're going to throw him right on back. If you do get one that's hooked in the gullet, though, where they're, they've swallowed that hook, it's best to just cut it. That hook will rust out on its own. But that one was not quite deep enough to have to go into that mode. It was just in front of his throat. But if you ever get one hooked that deep, that's when you're going to want to cut those hooks. There's another one. There's another one on the jig. Little guy. But man, given the conditions, it sure is fun just to still be able to catch them. Like I said, it's right off of this point. These fish are stacked. The wind's blowing into it. We got construction going on just over the hill. But there's a little bit of vegetation, some nice gravel, chunk rock, a submerged point, wind blown. That makes, these are the structures, the points you want to focus on, on this river system, because it's going to kick all the food up, the plankton comes up, the little bugs, the shad come in to feed on that. Guess who comes in right behind them? The bass. If you can hold in it, and we're barely holding in it right now between the current and the actual wind itself, it's a challenge, but man, they can still be caught under the extreme conditions. Ooh. Come here, chunky monkey. <laughs> well, folks, I'm going to tell you something right now. This wind is howling. And I don't think we're going to be able to stick it out much more. I think the right we're going to get some storms coming through here. Thank you again for watching us this week. We'll see you next time right here on Tony's Spot on Fishing. There goes the front of the boat. <laughs>